so you guys saw the title. Um, this will be my prediction for Conor McGregor versus Dustin Poirier. Um, now let's just jump right into it. Let's not do any of the bullshit. First things first. Actually, let's not jump into it. Let's 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 talk about the first fight. Obviously, people know that they fought. This is a rematch. And in the first fight, he finished Dustin. Dustin. He finished Dustin. I believe in the first round. I could be wrong about that. But he finished him pretty handily. Um, and some people say that this was because Dustin was immature. Even Dustin says that. Well, I was immature at the time. I got really emotional, and I fought emotionally. And while that was true, and his emotions definitely could have played into him getting knocked out, but in a way, not really. I think if it was Jose Aldo saying that, yeah, because Jose Aldo literally ran at him because he was mad, and he did something really stupid because of his emotions, and he ran at him, and he got knocked the fuck out. He wasn't thinking when he did that. Um, let me shut that up. Dustin Poirier, though, when he got knocked out, it was because Connor had found a hole in the way that Dustin Poirier defended himself. When Dustin Poirier would see, I believe it was that left hand coming, most likely the left straight coming, what he would do is he would cover up like this to try to defend it. And Connor saw, all right, when he does that, he leaves the back of his ear, pretty much everything behind his hands open. And you hit someone behind their ear, they're gonna fall down. Right in front, he's talking to him. Oh, yeah. Hands in his hips. Oh, conversation. That's exactly what Connor did. So he fainted for a left hand. Connor, I mean not Connor, Dustin defended as he does or as he did, and he went around his guard and he hit him behind his ear, knocked him down, ground and pounded, the fight was over. That's nothing really to do with emotions, that's just a bad tendency that he had, and I don't know if he does that anymore. I didn't do extensive research. Remember, my name, used, my name before used to be Bare Minimum Entertainment. I'm sorry, guys. I didn't do full extensive research into Dustin Poirier, but in his last fight, I did watch, I did see something that he does um, that Connor definitely can exploit. And I think this fight probably is going to go the same way. Um, maybe Dustin last a little longer, but I don't see I don't see Connor struggling to be able to find that opening and find that hole. Um, and what I'm talking about is if you go back to the, there's a highlight Dustin Poirier versus Dan Hooker, and in the, in that highlight, something that you see that's very apparent when he doesn't know what Dustin. I mean, when, he, when Dustin Poirier doesn't know what Dan Hooker is going to throw with his hands, he does this thing where he's sort of like, it's sort of like a Philly shell type deal where it's like, all right, I can defend you with my arm. I can block it with my arm if you're going to the body. And all I have to do is this. And if you go to the face, I can just block like that. Obviously, you can see there's very many holes when you do that. There's there's lots of holes in in that when you do that. And that's something he does a lot. And that was against Dan Hooker, who's not quite as elusive and hard to predict as Conor McGregor. Dan Hooker is a great fighter, and he does use feints a lot. Obviously, he works with Israel Asanya, and that's something that is taught in City Kickboxing Gym, is the usage of feints and everything. But I think with Conor McGregor, he just uses feints and the idea of fluidity with his striking, so you don't know where it's going, you don't know when he's going, it's all like one motion, like he's not even really trying, so you don't know if he's fully gonna commit. Combined with his karate stance of jumping back and forth, he's jumping back and forth in a range, he could jump back and forth, throw a jab, you don't know what he's gonna do with it. It's a lot of, I don't know what the fuck's about to happen with Conor McGregor. And he actually has some really quick kicks that he uses when he gets you up against the cage to move you in the direction he wants to move you. A lot of the time, he may want to move you towards his left hand, find that opening, and exploit that opening. Um, and I'll get into that in a little bit. In a little bit, But I think if Dan Hooker has him not knowing what's going to happen, especially, but Dan Hooker did have a lot of he had height and reach on him connor has reach not as much height on i think they're the same height so maybe that came into play a little bit like the because i i have a friend who i spar who's taller and he uses a lot of feints and i i do some i do something like that a lot of the time when we box like in the gloves because i don't know what the fuck he's about to do you know so it's like it's better to just do this you know when when he when i don't know what he's gonna do than just allowing myself to get hit, you know, whatever. 
But I think that that still something like that will probably still come out with Connor because Connor does have the reach advantage. Uh, Connor has a 74 inch reach advantage, and I believe Dustin Poirier is what a, a 70. We're, we're about to find out. So he's 72, and Connor was able to use his reach and range actually decently against someone like Floyd Mayweather. Um, granted, I think that was a part of Floyd Mayweather's strategy is sort of allowing Connor to do make the fight entertaining for one the fight was definitely damn entertaining when we watched it but also to allow connor to tire himself out um but dustin poirier 72 inches of reach and connor's very good at using his reach he's very very good at using his reach um and bounce bouncing in and out of reach and being within range also something that dustin poirier does is when he feels like you're out of range and he wants to land sometimes he'll throw a lunging i mean a lunging a uh, lead hook i don't know i, I is he orthodox is he unorthodox uh fuck. i'm so bad i'm so bad guys i'm sorry <laughs> but he'll throw a a, a a lunging hook now what i want to add is that um as you can see here dan hooker even was able to catch him off guard after he was throwing i believe a hook or a combination Dustin Poirier is left very vulnerable after throwing combinations and he's very easy to hit with clean shots um, as you saw in that and multiple times in the fight. What you'll also see is that when you back him up against the cage what he'll do is he'll throw these sort of big right hand well, big hooks that leaves him very open and very vulnerable and if you do that against someone like Connor he's going to make you pay the consequences. He's going to bait you into swinging like that again and then once you swing like that big and wild he's gonna catch you i just don't see dustin getting away with that and being okay on the other hand dustin poirier is somebody who may not draw too many shots out of you but he'll try to get it in the pocket he'll try to get get close but that's what he that's what he did again in the first fight and it didn't really work out that well kind of someone who's not very easy to just come in get in the pocket and box up Connor can box very well as well. He can box in the pocket too, and he can hit and not get hit. And I think he's better at hit, hitting hard and not getting hit, drawing shots out of you than Dustin Poirier is. I just don't see where Dustin Poirier can win aside from if he can last the first two rounds, which is possible, which is possible, you know, and especially when you want to look at it, if he can last first two rounds, two rounds and a half, make Connor essentially Connor will tire himself out you don't even have to make Connor tire out as long as you last those first two rounds and they are not both 10 eights you have a very good chance at winning the fight after that but I don't think he'll just win by a TKO because Connor actually has a really good chin the only time Connor was dropped was I believe against Max Holloway he was sort of dropped but he popped right back up and then obviously Khabib um he didn't really get dropped by Mayweather <laughs> to be honest I mean he probably would have dropped if the, if the uh, ropes weren't there, but... Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, and plus, a lot of that was fatigue as well. However, though, that was ninth round, which is 27 minutes. That's actually past the amount of time that you'd fight in a, a UFC match. That was like ninth round or maybe even 10th round uh, where he got finished. And if it was 10th round, he already fought 27 minutes. And if it was ninth round, he already fought 24 minutes, which is basically a full UFC fight. And I think he got finished well into a minute into that round. So he definitely already went a UFC match before getting finished. So it's not easy to just finish Conor McGregor um, with your hands, especially. And Dan Hooker is going to have to do that. I do think Dan Hooker would be able to turn it up. But the thing is, Dan Hooker also gets tired as the fight goes on, too. But that's more so later into fourth round, fifth round where he was even tired against Dan Hooker, and that's because he was taking a lot of damage. He'll definitely be taking a lot of damage from Connor, though, and when you get hurt and when you're taking damage, that makes you tired as well. The fight, I think if it goes like this, if the fight goes to full five, it's more so oriented toward, towards Dustin. He'll have to do a long climb back. I don't see him winning the first two rounds. If he can just unanimously win the last three rounds, which may be possible, but considering they both have a full training camp and Connor's very good at preparing, I would hope that he does have something to, to, to where he can at least win the first three rounds and then last two, he finds a way to just coast, you know, and whatever he has to do. The thing, I know he, he got tired against Nate Diaz, but it, 
thing about Nate Diaz's style is he doesn't get tired. He's a fucking zombie. Dustin Poirier is similar, similar, not as much uh, of a zombie as Nate to where he just absorbs damage like Nate Diaz does. Um, but you have to remember, Nate Diaz is someone who longer reach than Connor and taller. So Connor also had to overexert on a lot of his strikes, miss a lot, which makes you even more tired, and also have to take more damage. He doesn't have to do that against Dustin Poirier as much. So I think it will help him save a little bit more energy and he won't be nearly as tired. He will be tired, but not as tired. Um, I do ultimately seeing Connor winning this fight. I do see him winning this fight. I, I would think he has something to win the first three rounds realistically and Dustin's gonna have to climb back and win every single round after that and I just I, I don't see Connor letting letting someone especially Dustin just be able to just win every single round but it's possible Dustin is a great fighter they're both great fighters we just have to see on the day you know we have to see on the day I think a finish is very likely because Connor's just really good at that like he's He's really he he's not someone who just runs into a finish or forces it. He just sees openings or he creates openings and he takes the opportunity. And Dustin definitely had Dustin definitely has openings and Dustin creates his his own openings for people to use against him. And someone like Connor can definitely But hey, I don't know. You guys disagree? Do you agree? Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Um, I'm out. Peace. Hey guys, just doing the outro, reading comments from other videos. Rip Still says, I'm back. Where'd you go, buddy? It's nice to have you again. Uh, I asked who disliked my Hisoka video, and James Johnson said, I ducking didn't, that's for sure. Then who was it, James? Uh, Only Kid says, Jake can counter his overhand rights. KSI will not change. He will go wild like usual, and Jake will have more experience fighting people. And plus, KSI is not fighting. You must be a kid or you just don't watch fighting or both um, Jake is a different fighter than Logan Paul is so he'll have a he won't really be able to draw out those big looping overhand rights like Logan was able to That's what I think. But hey, if you think KSI will do that again by all means and then uh, David Wood is life is Spamming saying this needs more views and comments and all that and he's helping the algorithm Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. You definitely helped the algorithm on that video. With that being said, guys, I'm out officially. Uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Bye-bye.